Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Brad Muscle, and welcome to the course introduction and overview video for Philosophy 124, Logic and Critical Thinking. In this video, I'm going to introduce myself, uh, let you know a little bit more about who I am. I mean, after all, you're going to be hearing from me quite frequently throughout the course. So I thought it would be of interest to some of you at least to hear a little bit more about me. And then I will invite you to introduce yourself as well in the course forums online. Uh, that way we can, you know, all get to know one another. Um, again, one of the themes you're going to hear throughout this video is if you need help, you know, go online, voice your questions in the forums. That way uh, we can all sort of benefit from it together, right? Chances are if you have a question about something someone else does as well. And I feel like these introductions go a long way towards making us more comfortable doing that, for example, sooner. Uh, so that's just one of the reasons why I do these uh, introductions at the outset. Uh, you'll probably hear more about me than you'll ever care to know. I know I didn't like going through and doing introductions uh, myself when I was a student in classes, but I've grown to appreciate, uh, again, at least on day one, right? You don't want to do too much. Uh, why not go through some basic introductions? So if we were meeting in a face-to-face -face course, uh, you would hear the same spiel um, from me, and then I would turn the tables around and go through and ask everyone to say a little bit of, about themselves uh, as well. So uh, we'll go through introductions, and then uh, you, we'll go through the syllabus, course schedule. We'll try to give you an idea of what to expect, um, sort of a lecture by lecture basis, but then also give you a, a purview of the course, uh, you know, in a more a broad sense, you know, what are we doing in section one, what are we doing in section two, and so on. Um, so I'll speak to, to that as well in this video. Um, I'll go through some important points with respect to, you know, resources that you want to be well acquainted with. Uh, the Q&A documents, I'll reference those, the notes regarding the online format document, obviously the course syllabus schedule and so on. So I'll reference those. We'll go through some of the more important points uh, related um, to those documents. Uh, so after this video, hopefully you feel somewhat comfortable, you know, with respect to who I am, knowing who I am, a little bit more about me, uh, feel comfortable sort of getting into things and speaking a little bit about yourself. But then also, you know, hopefully you'll feel comfortable with respect to the course policies and procedures and you know, how things are going to be run. You know, I'll talk about, obviously, with respect to the syllabus, the grading components, you know, what you will have to do to uh, earn points in the course. So we'll go through all of that. And again, at the end, hopefully you will feel uh, sort of ready to jump in and comfortable with respect to how things will be run. So that's the overall objective with respect to this video. Let's go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, I am Dr. Brad Muscle. I am from Kearney, Nebraska, was born and raised there. Uh, although I wanted to get out of Kearney uh, ASAP as soon as I graduated high school, the University of Nebraska at Kearney was the school willing to pay, pay the most in terms of the bill. So uh, unfortunately, or at least I thought at the time, I ended up going to college, you know, less than a mile away from my, my parents, which is, you know, I, like a lot of teenagers, I wanted to get to try to have some distance from them for once. Um, but uh, they say, you know, things work out for a reason. I ended up meet, meeting my future wife there, uh, had a great experience with the philosophy uh, department there, and so on and so forth. So spent uh, what I wanted to be the first 18 years, I, uh, but turned out to be the first 21 years. So I, my undergraduate stint was at the University of Nebraska at Kearney. So born and raised there. Um, then I met my wife there. We ended up moving out to Boston together. And so we spent, what was it, three years out there? Um, was in Boston from 2003 to 2006. I have a master's degree from Boston College. She uh, received a law degree there. So we both went to school there. And the impetus for us kind of moving back uh, to the Midwest. She's from Omaha, Nebraska. And so we're both from, you know, Nebraska. Uh, so we, we had family and friends here, but kind of more than that, uh, we are kind of opposites when it comes to a lot of things, uh, interestingly. And she's, I guess it kind of makes sense. She's from Omaha, a much bigger city than, than my hometown in Kearney. Uh, she loved Boston. And while I love sort of the culture and so on there, 
I did not like living there at all. It was not only was it a big city, everyone was crammed into a very uh, condensed area and that it didn't it wasn't for me so I was ready to uh, move somewhere at least where it was a little bit more spread out uh, and so Kansas City was kind of a compromise for us we live on the outskirts in western Shawnee uh, so we have access then to you know the big city but yet we still live in a kind of a, a smaller town area if you will um, so it was kind of a, a nice compromise and it also gave me access to you know teaching positions and I guess more importantly at the time was uh, I ended up uh, entering the, uh, the PhD program in philosophy at the University of Kansas. So uh, that was back in 2006 and ended up defending that my PhD or defending my dissertation, I should say, and receiving my PhD then in 2014. So anyway, uh, that's kind of what brought us back here. She also uh, received employment from the Department of Labor in downtown Kansas City. Back in 2006, she's been working there ever since. So that, again, was the reason why we only spent three years out in Boston. Um, I, I like to mention that I had the good experience of being a world traveler from a very early age. And I think that's important. I don't know how important necessarily in logic and critical thinking, but when it comes to philosophy, where you're exposed to a lot of disparate beliefs and you know worldviews, I think being exposed to the fact that there's all these different ways of looking at things at an early age really helped me when it came to entering the field of philosophy. Uh, so I was lucky. My, my dad's job entailed a lot of travel, and so I would go with him, uh, not only you know, here in the United States, but then uh, around the world. I'm only missing in terms of continents Antarctica and Asia, and I'm willing to bet I'm not the only one missing Antarctica. Um, and I'm sure I'm not alone. You know, it's probably many of you that have had the good benefit of you know, traveling quite a bit. Uh, again, I think it's been great in terms of my subsequent philosophical career and and kind of exposing me at an early age to, again, uh, a wide range of ways of looking at things. Anyway, I mentioned my wife. We've been married for a long time now. Uh, it's been 16 years at this point. So we have four kids. Uh, we, you know, occupy our time uh, more and more and more. So I was just thinking, the youngest now is six, and they are all completely involved in all sorts of different activities. So uh, while I'm not as busy during the day because they're all uh, at school now throughout the day, nights are just crazy throughout the week. And so uh, I guess one of the things I'll mention while I'm thinking about it is that I want to be as accessible as possible. And if you're in the course, uh, in the syllabus, you're getting, you'll have my my phone number, you know, feel free to call me anytime, but there's, there's a good chance that I might be busy at the time. And so if I don't answer, you know, I do make a, a concerted effort to get back to students as soon as possible. So uh, call day or night, anytime. If I'm sleeping, I won't have the uh, phone near me. Uh, so I, I mean that in all seriousness, you, know, you can call at any point and I do try to get back to, to you as soon as possible. Email or, you know, calling me is the best way to to reach me but so I what made me think of that and again was, we have four kids three girls and one boy and so they do you know occupy a lot of our time um, I used to be daddy daycare and I used to give a spiel about how I was daddy daycare um, but that's not so much that anymore it's daddy taxi uh, along with mommy taxi so um, yeah things are interesting at, uh, uh, at night now in particular uh, so I mentioned my three daughters, Abigail, she just uh, will, will be turning 13 at the end of this month, so we're in, in June, and Sophia and Zoe, they actually share the same birthday, June 3rd, and so they just had a birthday, Sophia turned nine and Zoe turned six, and Zoe is our, our youngest, as I intimated earlier, she's again six, is our youngest, and then Jack is our only boy, he turned 11 in December. So I have alluded to, I wanted to mention a little bit about my background in philosophy. So this is a course in, you know, that you're taking through the philosophy department. So I mentioned the University of Nebraska at Kearney. I have a degrees in psychology and philosophy from there and then went out to Boston uh, where I received a, a master's degree in uh, a philosophy from Boston College. And then I referenced the University of Kansas as well, uh, right down the road in Lawrence. I received my PhD from there in 2014. So Johnson County Community College, 
where I'm presently teaching this course. I've been teaching there since the fall of 2007, so it's been quite a while now. I've also taught at, it's been a while since I've taught at some of these other schools, but, uh, you know, years ago I taught at Rockhurst, University of St. Mary, a, a plethora of uh, various schools around the Kansas City region as well. But now it's primarily just been Johnson County Community College, where again, I've taught since uh, 2007. Okay, now the stuff that really matters. Um, I'm into sports, fantasy sports. I like uh, our our uh, fantasy football league. Uh, we're very devoted to it. We've been playing since, I want to say, 2006. We have a 13-page constitution, which we uphold, uphold rigidly. Um, yeah, so love fantasy. Usually in class, I would pull the students, and there's always like one or two that are um, diehard fantasy, you know, football players in, uh, in particular, but do like the fantasy sports, uh, played baseball and football and basketball growing up. Uh, when I went to the University of Nebraska Kearney is about when I started de uh, developing an interest in hockey for whatever reason. And so that really became at that point, kind of the sport that I was interested in most in most. And fast forward 15 years, whatever it's been later, three years ago, I decided on a whim, well, why am I just watching it? Why have I just been watching it all these years? I finally decided to take the dive and try it out. And I've been playing, there's an arena, one of the three uh, ice hockey arenas in the Kansas City area right now. One of them is right down the road here. So I've been playing uh, in leagues, I'm on two teams right down the road uh, playing uh, every Sunday we play. So love that. It's become a, a big time hobby of mine, starting to learn about, you know, sticks and skates and all of that. Um, so really picking up on that. Also started running about the same, same time. Um, don't know where that came from. You know, tw 20 years ago growing up, I, I always hated running. I still don't really like running. Uh, if I didn't have music to listen to or a podcast, I don't know if I could actually run the miles I do, but uh, in the interest of sort of, you know, getting in better shape, started doing that, oh, three, four years ago, or whatever it's been, and kind of stuck with that and really have come to appreciate the benefits of that. So that's another thing I picked up recently. I actually have, one thing I picked up in Boston was guitar, started playing that in Boston, uh, what's it been, almost 20 years ago now, and I'm looking this way because along this wall I have like five or six or five or six I have seven guitars hanging up on the wall and started as I mentioned playing about 20 years ago now I guess it's been I don't get the wrong idea I have no skill whatsoever even though I I really did try for a while uh, especially before kids now I hardly ever have the time to play anymore um, but yeah no skill really there but do like to mess around with guitar uh, when I got a chance, which is very rarely these days, again, with four kids, um, you know, it's hard to turn up an amp and jam on a guitar anymore. I'm willing to bet I'm not alone on this boat either, but I'm a huge music fan. Now, in my humble opinion, it's all gone downhill from the 60s and 70s, so the classic rock era. I'm a huge fan of the classic rock era. Pink Floyd, Jimi Hendrix, The Doors, etc. Um... Another thing I guess I would mention is that I picked up strategy board games, and not only me, but my family. We are, we're huge fans of strategy board games. This started actually when, my, uh, when we brought my firstborn home, Abigail. I have a vivid memory of when she would be taking naps. Back then I had time to actually play video games. I would go on to Xbox, I think it was called Xbox Arcade. And I stumbled upon this game, The Settlers of Catan. And it's not like the, if you're like me, I grew up with Monopoly, the game of life, you know, you're spinning spinners, rolling dice. Uh, it's not like that. I mean, these are thinky games, and The Settlers of Catan, I had never played anything like it. And so in, instantly fell in love with this sort of strategy game. And so now we have a huge library of these strategy board games. I've even designed several myself. And so we like to uh, play those games when we get a chance. So Settlers of Catan is... The one that really, so so no doubt some of you have probably played that at this point. It's become pretty pretty big. Uh, that's the one that was my, they call them gateway, dr uh, gateway drugs, gateway games. Um, that was my gateway game. Uh, 
what else? I guess the last thing I'd mention is, uh, and this comes kind of comes with the territory. Most philosophers, at least in my experience, love their books. So I have a, you know, love books as well. I have a huge library. Um, we're all pretty big readers. Uh, my kids all read a lot as well. So we have books you know, all over the house, typically. In addition to, I like, uh, like I mentioned, a big library out in the garage. So I, I think that's it. As I mentioned, probably way more than you care to know about me. I would like to, as I mentioned before, encourage you to do the same now. You know, go on to our chat forum uh, and introduce yourself. Um, at this point, you've probably, hopefully, read my course announcement where I encourage you to do precisely that. Go on if you have time and uh, introduce yourself. You know what? Uh, what makes you interesting? Do you have any weird idiosyncrasies? You know, unique hobbies, or what are your hobbies? You know, they don't have to necessarily be unique. What 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 are you interested in? Uh, does anything stand out about you? Uh, and if you know, if you're on the the shy end of the spectrum, would prefer not to say much. That's fine too. You can just tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, you know, what your major is, something along those lines. But again, just want to get us to start to feel comfortable, kind of interacting. Uh, especially because this can be a difficult uh, intro level you know, course. And if you have questions, you need to, again, feel comfortable approaching me and hopefully, you know, again, voicing your question online in the forum so that everyone else will have the benefit of hearing our, our interaction as well. Because, again, if you have a question, odds are someone else in the course might have the same question. So, okay. I think before we get into the nitty gritty in terms of the syllabus, the course documents and so on, one other point I would mention is that I realize that for a lot of you taking the course, you're not necessarily taking the course because you have it you know, in, in an interest, at least one that you're aware of at this point in logic and critical thinking, you know, you're probably marking something off the list. You have to take it for, for whatever reason. And, and I realize that and I uh, understand that. And one of the things I, in view of that partially, one of the things I try to do is to make the course, you know, interesting. And then hopefully if you have some latent interest in philosophy that you weren't aware of, you know, obviously I'd like to, to spark that, but you know, even if um, philosophy is not necessarily your thing, or even if this particular area of philosophy is not necessarily thing, right, your thing, I still aim to make the course interesting, dare I even say entertaining. And then obviously, hopefully, you find it enlightening, that you, you find it um, worthwhile. And I do think that this is a different type of philosophy class, and I'll get into that in the first few lectures where when we carve out... Um, what exactly we're up to here. That this one in particular, this course in particular, I think it becomes pretty clear pretty early on how valuable what we're talking about can be. And I guess um, sort of, you know, what what is my aim in general and sort of what am I going for? I actually got an email from a student this that just finished up this past spring of 2021, took the course, and I got an email from her and it really speaks to kind of what I'm going for, what I like to hear from students, what I hope every student kind of experiences. And I, I didn't um, copy all of the email, but this is most of it. So she writes, thank you. Wow, this was a super tough semester for me. Thank you for teaching this online course. Learning about good and bad arguments actually helped to keep me sane in a somewhat difficult situation I had. Being able to name why someone else's argument is flawed was refreshing, and it helped me make stronger arguments. I cannot explain how valuable this is in my life. Thank you. I hope you have a great summer. I hope you have a great summer as well, if you happen to listen to this. I'm not going to name her, but uh, that was awesome to receive. And again, I hope that all of my students come away from the course sort of with that experience. And you know, so I hope it's um, enlightening and hopefully somewhat entertaining regardless of where you fall on the spectrum of your interest in philosophy or your interest in logic and critical thinking in particular. Again, my wife and I, totally opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of our interest in philosophy and, and discussing you know, philosophical issues. Um, 
So regardless if you were like me and thoroughly enjoy philosophical discussions from the get-go or you're like her and it's not necessarily your thing, I hope you find the course entertaining and enlightening. Okay. Now, I want to be sure to show our textbook. Very important that you have the right textbook. From edition to edition, they change things up, oftentimes dramatically. And that includes, you know, switching cha where chapters were. Chapter 8 becomes chapter 9, and what was 921 becomes 817, and so on and so forth. So it will not work if you have the 12th edition, the 11th edition, the 10th edition, the 9th edition, the 3rd edition. So no matter what email you send me asking, you know, will the 5th edition work? No, it won't work unless it's the 13th edition. So that is... Again, the 13th edition is the one we will be working with. Now, up until this very semester, I had been working with the 10th, the 10th edition. Just FYI, you will, in the lecture videos, you will see me, in the lectures in general, you will see me referencing the 10th edition all the time and also the previous editions I've worked with because, to be honest, sometimes I like how they characterize things in previous editions more than I like like it in the current iteration. So um, you'll see me referencing the various editions throughout all the lectures, but you need to have the 13th edition uh, for the homework and the reading itself. Okay, so you will be responsible for the chapters that are assigned from the textbook and then all the lectures. So there'll be 12 lectures. We'll say more about this when we go through the, the course schedule. Okay, but again, textbook, it's not optional, and you have to have the right one. Why? Oh, I guess thoughts on the book real quick. I was actually, I hang on to the, the previous iteration that I'm working with as long as possible. Uh, it's easier, to be honest, on the one hand, because then I don't have to update lecture notes because when they change pages, pages and so on. But I, I'm also under the impression that, you know, students have told me that they can get these older editions oftentimes for 3 $4 versus 100, you know, whatever it is for the brand new one. Um, so that is the reason, one of the main reasons, really, why I would always stick with the one, you know, not change it constantly. But the bookstore has been impressing me. I guess it's very difficult to find the, the one I'd been working with, the 10th edition. So I wanted to speak to kind of why I changed at this point to the 13th edition. Really, I had been delaying as long as possible, and so I promised that come the summer, session, I would make the transition. So that is the impetus for uh, me uh, uh, adopting the 13th edition at this point. I do like, so there are, uh, there are things I like about the 13th edition, but there are certainly things I like better about the previous edition. Regardless though, I do, I do appreciate how the authors offer a, there's a survey of all the pertinent issues that we have to discuss. Uh, and I think they do it in a kind of entertaining way, which again is one of the things I kind of strive for myself. So that's why I adopted their particular text, even though I'm not a big fan of the constant uh, new additions. You know, we're talking about most of this stuff has been around for 2000 plus years, dating back to Aristotle. We'll talk about that in the first few lectures. Uh, I don't know, you know, why we need 13 editions, but anyway, that's enough of, of that minor rant, I guess. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the syllabus. Where's that here? This. So I'm not going to go through this in detail, you know, reading everything. Uh, I'll just highlight the, the critical points here. First, uh, you have my contact info at the top. Again, I try to be as accessible as possible, um, so don't hesitate to contact me. Now, if let's say 48 hours has gone by and you haven't heard back from me, please don't hesitate to you know contact me again. You know something might have come up. You, I didn't get your your email or didn't get your voicemail for whatever reason. So. Um, please do wait, uh, unless it's an emergency, please do wait, you know, give me 48 hours. Typically, I respond within 24, 
But if 48 hours passes, by all means, contact me again. Something might be up, okay? So want to be as accessible as possible. We'll talk about that at the very top there. Uh, give you the dates of our course there as well. The info for the textbook is listed there, okay? I'll mention, moving on to page two of the syllabus, that's all on page one. I'll let you peruse the rest of that at your leisure. Um, on page two, you know, you do need to have the access to that URL, obviously, to our uh, course online, right? This is an online course. Uh, you need to be familiar with and able to navigate our, our, our course. You know, everything will, our, our course online, right? The, the online site. Uh, everything will be done through that, right? The quizzes, you know, take the quizzes through through the website. All my lectures will be provided through the, the website. Um, homework assignments will be turned in through that website. So again, that's the URL for it. And you'll need to make sure you're comfortable uh, with that. So let's go ahead and talk about what the most important thing, arguably for a lot of you, right? Grading, you know, how, how is your grade going to be determined? So you see a, a synopsis of it there, right? Under the grading heading, you're going to have four quizzes that are worth 80% ultimately of your final grade, okay? 200 points each. There's four of them. So 800 points, of course, in sum is worth a thousand or in total is worth a thousand. So 800 of those thousand points are from the four quizzes. And then you also have four graded homework assignments. Now we'll talk about here in a moment, the homework assignments and how you'll actually turn in more than four, but only four of them will be graded. They, they are each worth 50 points okay, for a total of 200 points then. So hence that's 20% of your total grade then will be determined by these homework assignments. And that's exactly how your grade will be determined. Okay. One of the things I, I mentioned in the, uh, the Q&A, so I provide these Q&A documents, which is like previous questions that from former students and in the general q and I you know one of the students asks is there it's a common question I get you know can I do anything to to boost my grade and no it's determined exactly as outlined in the syllabus okay so that's not going to change I have an obligation to uphold you know the policies and procedures outlined in this this syllabus so this is how your grade is going to be determined okay um, as indicated here and it's pretty traditional, right? A is 900 or 90% of the points, so 900 plus in our course. Uh, B is 80% and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and I, I guess I should mention, so there is this course overview quiz that I make available and it kind of highlights some of the um, critical procedures and so on and, and for the course and ask questions pertaining to those. And I will mention that if you, so in borderline cases at the end of the uh, course, so you're real close to the next letter grade but didn't quite get there, uh, if you completed this quiz and you've been an active participant and engaged in the course throughout, right, you have routinely submitted assignments, maybe posted things when you had questions and so on, okay, then I will bump you up or consider bumping you up, I should say, okay, but you have to have had completed the course overview quiz, so I want to note that. Okay, so make sure, and that is due at the beginning, towards the beginning of the course. So make sure uh, that you do complete that. I mean, it's optional, but make sure you complete it if you want to be considered, you know, to be bumped up in a borderline case. Okay. okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the main component of. Let me do this backwards in my notes. Uh, Let's talk first about, yeah, the, I got the quizzes since that comes first in the syllabus itself. So there's four of these. I'll, I'll, we'll go through the, the schedule here in a moment. But the course is divided up into four sections, and each section has a quiz that corresponds to it. Now, philosophy is a difficult enough subject in and of itself, right, and logic and critical thinking, no exception. Uh, one of the things I try, so I try to, take steps then to mitigate that difficulty. And one of the things I do to, to help compensate for the difficulty is nothing's cumulative in terms of the, the, the quizzes. So once we take the section one quiz, you can, I don't want you to forget about it, right? but you can forget about in, in terms of studying them for the subsequent quizzes, all the material that was related to section one. Right? When you get 
Well, once we finish the section two quiz, you don't have to worry about the section one or section two material in terms of the section three quiz and so on and so forth. So our, our final is no different than any of the other quizzes. So in fact, I it might even be in terms of the quizzes we take in the course, it might be the easiest one. So um, I thought I'd mention that, okay? So there's four quizzes. They all have the same format in terms of them being worth 200 points. They consist of, consist of questions. A lot of them, the bulk of them are like multiple choice, but that might be true, false, fill in the blank, okay? sometimes matching. Okay? Uh, and they will always be worth, again, 200 points, and they will only pertain to that section. Anything else I want to mention there? These quizzes aren't intended to be open book, open notes, any of that. And I think that, you know, if you are sitting there looking through, that's only going to slow you down, actually, because, again, it is timed. And so if you, if you want to do the, the best you can do, prepare beforehand, study beforehand, know the stuff so that you don't have to be looking through the notes, looking through the book, trying to look certain stuff up during the quiz itself. Because, again, I think that's only going to probably hurt students. But I just wanted to state explicitly that you know the quizzes are not an open 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 anything other than your own brain right when you're completing the quiz okay uh, I think that's all I want to say in terms of the quizzes now for the other com component of your grade the homework assignments First, how many? So there are 12 lectures in the course, three for each of the four sections. Every lecture except one, the first one, has a chapter in the textbook that corresponds to it. Every chapter has then a homework assignment associated with it. So every, uh, so basically you're going to have 11 total homework assignments that you should be turning in. The only lecture that doesn't have a homework assignment assignment associated with it is lecture one which again also doesn't have any reading right there's no chapter associated with it it's just me i'll say a little bit more about this at the very end of this video it's just me giving you a general introduction to philosophy itself okay uh, so there are i do want to note there are going to be 11 homework assignments you'll be turning in and they're clearly indicated on the schedule which again we'll go through here in a moment okay. now only four of those are actually going to be graded. I don't tell you ahead of time, and I go through all this and mention all this in the syllabus and the notes regarding the online format document and so on, but only four of them are actually going to be graded. I don't tell students ahead of time. Okay, I want you to be doing all of this practice, right? It's essential in logic and critical thinking that you do all of the work uh, because that's how you get better and actually start to understand a lot of it. And so to help ensure that students are doing all of the work, I don't announce ahead of time which of these assignments are graded. Okay, so you're turning 11 in, four of which will be graded. I will announce shortly after a graded assignment was due, I'll announce that it's going to be graded. Okay, and I try to get those graded and returned you know, in a reasonable amount of time. I, I shoot for a week, uh, within a week, and typically I can, I can make that happen. Um, what else? Oh, so again, I outlined this. I think it's in, in detail in the notes regarding the online format document, but I'm working with Canvas and I have to work according to what it allows me to do. And basically I can't set it up so that, uh, you know, I indicate ahead of time which of the four are going to be graded without showing you. So in sum, I have to present all of these assignments from the beginning as if it, in a way, I have to set it up in a way such that they all say from the outset that they're not going to be graded. But I, and I'm emphasizing this now. But when one of the graded ones, one of the ones I will be grading is graded, at that point I will change, go in there, change that particular assignment, and it will no longer say that, right? And it will be graded. Okay. So I just want to point out that they're all going to say at the outset, given how Canvas is set up and and how you know what I have to work with they all say that they won't be graded, right? Each of these um, 11 homework assignments, but four of them will be graded, okay? So they're all due by the dates indicated on the course schedule, which again, we'll talk about here in a moment. So I 
Again, I wanted to emphasize, although all of them say they will not be graded or count towards your, your grade, four of them will be. So no excuses then. You know, I can't tell you how many times, even though I go through this, right, in the course documents, how many times, you know, a year, once or twice a semester usually, uh, I saw that it wasn't going to be graded, and all of a sudden it is, you know, it did say it was going to be graded. I would have done it if yada, yada, yada. I'm telling you right now, right? So I don't mean to sound like a jerk, right? But I've got to um, outline all of this and, and be firm about it here at the outset, and hopefully... Give, you know, given that, then we won't face any issues down the road, okay? Uh, I will mention as well that all the writing, so there's about halfway through the course, we start doing some writing assignments with the homework. Um, and so what is that? Like uh, lecture seven starting, I want to say with lecture seven and whatever chapter, what would that be? Chapter three, that we start doing a, a, a writing exercise. Uh, it's not much. But I just want to point out that it will have, those will have to be one to two pages typed, double spaced, using 12 point Times New Roman or Calibri font. And I'm just stressing that now again so that we're clear. This is outlined somewhere. I want to say that it's uh, well, it's actually in the syllabus and it's also in the notes regarding the online format. Okay. But again, that you won't have to worry about that until halfway into the course. Okay, the, the writing exercises. Uh, so I do want to mention again, I think I said this earlier, I post the answers, or I think I mentioned that I'll, I'll announce the ones that are graded shortly after they were due, but I post the answers for all of the homework assignments shortly after they're due. And then, so you'll always have the answers shortly after the homework assignments are due. And then you'll get feedback from me on the ones that are graded. So you won't get feedback on the ones that aren't graded. You will get the answers from me, right? I'll post a, a document with the answer. Now, having said all that, though, if you are unsure about some of the answers after going through them, you know, by all means, contact me, right? And we can discuss whatever you want to discuss about a particular you know, homework assignment. But I just wanted to mention the general sort of methodology or the way I proceed is you will get all the homework answers. And I'll post them shortly after they're due. And then you'll hopefully within a week from the, the ones that are graded, right, you'll actually get feedback from me in terms of the ones you got right, ones you got wrong, and so on. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, I guess I would throw this out there too. If you notice, this happens periodically because, you know, I have to do this 11 times um, throughout the course. If you notice, it's you know the homework was due uh, yesterday or the day before, maybe even a, a day or two. But you notice the the homework answers haven't been posted. Shoot me an email. I probably forgot to post them. Okay, so I just wanted to, to mention that. Okay, that's that. I think we're ready to then go ahead and discuss the course schedule. And kind of, get, I want to get, kind of give you an overview of the course, how it's going to work in general, and then kind of what to expect in a sort of, I guess, day by day basis as well, or depending on whether you're taking it over the summer or during the spring, right? It might depend um, whether it's a weekly thing or a daily thing, but what to expect kind of a lecture by lecture basis, if you will, versus also I want to kind of give you the big picture perspective. So hopefully that makes sense. That's what I'm going to try to do um, now. So I want to mention this is available. I have both the course schedule and I'll um, be up uploading as well a course overview then. So the course overview just kind of nicely captures what we're doing in general, the four sections of the course the titles of the lectures and the corresponding chapters of the, the, the chapters of the book that then correspond to those lectures without all the detail of the course schedule, okay? like all the particular homework exercises that are due on um, what particular dates. Okay? So I wanted to mention that both of these will be available and they're both kind of nice. Um, the course overview again gives you kind of a more general overview of what's going on. And then you'll want to use the schedule if you're taking the course, obviously, to make sure, let me start with that. On the dates on the course schedule, the idea is you will have done anything listed under the, that date by that date. 
Now, lecture one is kind of an anomaly because, again, there's no associated reading and no homework associated with it. Uh, but then, like, so, for example, the summer 2021 course, June 8th, you'll want to have read chapter one in the textbook, pages one through 34. Now, I guess most of the time, actually, those last few pages are just like homework exercises and answers to some of the homework exercises. So you, you won't actually read that per se, but that's all of chapter one. You'll need, you'll be responsible for reading all the text and then doing the, in this case, on June 9th, the summer session, we go Monday through Thursday is how I set up the schedule. So the next day, that's probably a Wednesday then, whereas June 8th was a Tuesday, uh, then you'll be turning in the homework okay, by midnight, by 11.59. Okay? Don't wait till the last minute either. You'll save us both headaches. Okay? But you need to turn in by 11.59 in theory on June 9th. Okay? You'll have turned in all the, that homework. Okay? For example, exercise one, one, numbers 1 through 12, that, that'll be due along with all those other ones indicated there. Okay, so that's kind of how you should approach the schedule session by session. We start off, I indicate in the first session, if you will, you know, go over the course website, make sure you're familiar with that. Review the syllabus, all the course documents, the syllabus, which we've kind of gone through, the, the notes regarding the online format document that I provide. Go through the course schedule, make sure you kind of have a sense for it yourself. Uh, so on and so forth. And then, you know, that first session, you will want, I've already posted a, a video of lecture one, go ahead and, you know, watch that if you have time or just review, you know, the lecture one notes. So I provide um, the notes for the lectures, uh, PDF and PowerPoint versions. Okay. So if you're going to watch the videos, I've posted half of them at this point, I plan on then posting. So I've posted lectures one through six at this point. I as soon as I have time, I'll keep posting and then 7 through 12. And then the idea would be you will print off the PDFs or the PowerPoint, whatever version you prefer, and then follow along as you go through right, the lecture. Okay. Uh, so I do provide the lecture notes. I will have, at least have, you know, first six videos if you're taking the summer session. And then by the time... You know, most of you, when you're watching this, if you're taking the course, all the lecture videos will be available. So you go ahead again and print out. I guess you don't have to print them out. It's up to you, you know, how you do it. But I'll have all those versions. I guess the, the main point is I'll have all those versions available for you. Okay. So try to have the lectures either read through or watched and the, by the dates they are listed under and also the corresponding reading. And while I'm thinking about it, the lecture numbers don't correspond to the chapter numbers in the textbook. So I just wanted to point that out. So for example, lecture two actually relates to chapter one in the textbook. Lecture three relates to chapter two. And then it really starts getting funky, funky in the second section uh, because I actually skipped then a chunk of the text. I don't like actually how they um, how they have it set up. I'll elaborate that on that here in a moment. Um, but I, so lecture four then will correspond to chapter eight. Okay, so that's where the course overview again is kind of nice. But I do detail that even again on the course schedule. You see exactly you know what the lecture number is, and then with it what chapter in the book you need to read. So you know, if we were to go to jump to like um, July, let's see, July 1st in this case, where lecture seven on clarity is, we see that corresponds, then you'd also have to read chapter three in the textbook, pages 73 through 101. Okay, I said I would mention a little bit more about how I kind of jump in the textbook. Uh, and the, so, I can speak to that then by going to the course overview and talking a little bit about how the course is set up. So I like to start general, easy, okay, at least in theory. So that's what we do. The first section of the course is intro-ish stuff, right? So the first lecture is real general stuff. Uh, this is a philosophy course. I'll talk to you about you know, what philosophy is. You'll get a historical and categorical breakdown of philosophy. 
Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our, our particular topic then, what logic and critical thinking is, what, what does that amount to? That'll be the topic of lecture two. And then in lecture three, we'll set the, the stage for the second section of the course. And uh, I might as well mention it now, by far the most difficult section of the course. Okay, We will introduce arguments in lecture three. We'll talk about arguments in a general sense. So again, section one will offer a kind of introduction to philosophy and logic and critical thinking, and then also arguments, which then will be a segue. Lecture three is kind of a segue because then what we do in section two is we dial in and we focus on arguments. And in particular, the two types, right? So we'll spend lectures four and five talking about deductive arguments, spending a lecture on categorical logic and then a lecture on truth functional logic. And then we'll wrap up that section with lecture six, which is on inductive reasoning or inductive arguments, the other type of arguments that we come across. So, and the reason, I guess, here's the reason why. So in the textbook, Lectures two and three correspond to chapters one and two, but then I skip, I go from one to two to chapters nine, 10, and 11, because their chapter two talks about arguments, introduces arguments and what they are, which I think is a good time, right? Right at the end of our section one. So again, chapter two, which so that lecture three, which is on arguments, corresponds to chapter two of the textbook, which is on arguments. It's called two kinds of reasoning, which is basically two kinds of arguments. And then they skip, though, in the textbook, they skip, they go and then to chapters three, four, and five, where they talk about these other issues, clarity, credibility, and rhetoric, instead of diving further than into arguments, which they set up in chapter two. And so I think that makes more sense. And so after we set up arguments in lecture three, we then talk about them in much more detail in the second section. So that's why I do that. That's why um, we don't follow the textbook all the way through. Okay. So... I thought you might be interested in hearing that. So then after lecture six, after section two, we set arguments aside and we'll talk about other issues in critical thinking. I mentioned clarity, credibility, and rhetoric, which are related then to chapters three, four, and five of the textbook. That's what we'll discuss in section three. Okay, that'll be lecture seven, eight, and nine. So we'll consider again issues of you know, clarity, credibility, and rhetorical devices in that section. And then we'll wrap up the course in the final section, section four, by discussing mistakes. All kinds of mistakes we can make. Hopefully we don't make them, right? Hopefully this will help us identify these mistakes, avoid them ourselves, and equally important, be able to identify these mistakes when we're confronted with them from others. Right? So lectures 10, 11, and 12 are all about the different types of fallacies that um, we can come across as critical thinkers. So hence the title of section four, Fallacies. Okay, and that's covering then chapters six, seven, and eight of the textbook. So that's kind of a, a general picture of the course. We went through, you know, how the schedule itself works. Uh, talked about, I think, everything I wanted to mention with respect to the schedule. Talked about how there's various versions of the lecture available. So I'm about done here, I guess. I would speak once more to the difficulty of the topic, philosophy in general. And this in particular, um, even really some really smart people, and I'll elaborate this on this in the first few lectures, even some really smart people can struggle with this this particular topic for whatever reason. Uh, I've met really, really smart people and they, they are, you know, it's not from a lack of effort either, who just find this for whatever reason tricky. And I'll mention in one of the lectures, you know, I, for whatever reason, I struggle with foreign languages, learning foreign languages. I've always struggled with them. And so I can sympathize with those who, who have similar issues than with this. And so just wanted to acknowledge from the outset that, again, this is a, a difficult, I would say, intro course, but I, I do things to try to mit mitigate that difficulty. And I don't think that it's uh, unfair by any means. I think it's one of those things, it's kind of like math, and we'll draw parallels to that, where, you know, if you put in the effort and really focus, you know, and it kind of it does build on 
on itself too. You have to know the stuff we start with to be able to understand the subsequent stuff. But if you put in the time, just like math, do the exercises, the problems, you'll find that it, it, it is, you will be rewarded if you put in the, the effort. Um, but I wanted to say, so again, acknowledge that it can be difficult, but I do all sorts of things to try to ease that pain and learning this, you know, in the learning process, if you will. Uh, I'm here to help, as I mentioned. So I'm obviously one of the resources available. I mentioned the Q&A documents that I make available. In the ones that correspond to certain sections, like section one Q&A, you know, sometimes I'll elaborate if it's, if a, so those are all like, again, prior students that had questions about those at, those areas of the course. And so I'll elaborate if they had questions about certain material, you know, I'll elaborate my answer to them. So make sure you're consulting those. So there's a good chance if you have a question about something, it might already be addressed in those Q&A documents. So I provided those, again, don't forget about me, the forums, if you have a question, please do think about, you know, voicing it instead of just emailing me, um, voicing it in the forum so that way everyone else can um, hear the response as well. Uh, now, you know, again, if you're on the, sh the shy end of the spectrum, no worries, no problem. You feel free to email me or, or call me or whatever you, 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 know, you feel more comfortable with. Uh, okay, I think that's all I have in terms of this you know, introduction and overview. Uh, we went through, you know, you heard all about me. I introduced myself and, and who I am. And then you got a, hopefully a good overview of the course. You hopefully feel like you are in a good position to proceed and know what to expect in terms of how you'll be graded, uh, how to proceed in terms of the schedule. You know, it's, uh, I should, should emphasize the onus is on you to be familiar with all the policies and procedures outlined in the course documents. Okay. I emphasize routinely, for example, that there's no um, late assignments or quizzes, uh, no retakes. Now, if there's you know something extreme going on, you have an emergency. You know, I ask for documentation, but I you know I, I do work with students. You know, I do understand things happen, but by and large, right, there's no retakes, um, and you have to have it. You know, there's no late submissions. You have to have them turned in by the dates indicated on the schedule okay uh, but we went through again all the po uh, policies and procedures for the course so hopefully you have a good idea of what to expect you hopefully have a good idea of what we're up to in terms of um our, our journey right our what, what what the path looks like in terms of the, the course in general so that's what we did i wanted to offer a quick preview here before i let you go then so what are we going to be doing in section one i, I kind of spoke to it already when I went through and gave you a general overview of the course, right? But in lecture one, I'm going to start very broadly and talk about philosophy in general, which I like to do in all my intro courses. You know, this is a philosophy course. What is philosophy? Uh, so we'll talk about what philosophy is. And as I intimated earlier, I'll give you a historical and categorical breakdown of philosophy. Nothing too overly difficult. And then in lecture two, we'll home in on one of those categories of philosophy that we'll talk about from lecture that we mentioned in lecture one. We'll home in on one of those, namely our particular topic, logic or logic and critical thinking in general. Okay, so we'll talk about that in lecture two. And then in lecture three, we'll start focusing on arguments. We'll introduce what an argument is and talk about arguments in general. Okay, so that's the game plan. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And uh, I look forward to a successful course. Thank you.